start with, uh, I thought that some theoretical, you know, macro debate that uh, are going on, and especially current labor market debate or the discourse that uh, India. I thought that this accumulation process, like you know, uh, accumulation process is right now is uh, in you know is whether it is capitalist mode of or means of. So, but accum accumulation process is one of the debate that I would like to highlight or emphasize that could lead to informal sector. I'm not saying that accumulation process or capitalist mode of production process is actually leading to informal sector or informal economy. We, we can actually contest this, but I, I thought that this, this could be one of the hypothetical, you know, uh, hypothesis that one can start with. And then, of course, the mode of production and the means of production. And as you know, all of, all of you, you're more or less working on urban issues, urban labor market, uh, then urban landscape, land issues, and, you know, different, uh, I mean, it's a very diverse, it's not only urban labor market, then I, I, I thought that, you know, site of production for me is very important because uh, the, uh, the place, urban space or place that you, uh, is important for you maybe to just walk, but me as a worker, if I'm deriving my livelihood from the urban space or place, so that will be my site of production because I'm contributing in the production process. So I think this mode and means of production is also, later, I mean, I'd like to emphasize upon, and then we can revisit all these points at the uh, later half. And then, as you know, that um, we have this army of labor and India is surplus economy, I mean, surplus uh, economy with full of labor. So we have a lot of labor back in our hands so that, you know, that actually gives uh, power to bargain for example. So that is also I thought. And then the um, fourth one, I was, I was not, uh, I was not, uh, I was a little confused, but I thought that yes, and I'm sure I'll be criticized on this, but let's, let's have a discussion and, uh, and young minds. So let's have a discussion. It's on the public policy. And I generally, I mean, I, th this is my opinion that, you know, different state led growth policies, especially which which is you know uh, related to urban urban policies or urban labor market somehow i'm i'm thinking like that actually is leading to further informalization okay so i'll i'll come back because i'll 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 come back all four points and then we'll try to see that how that uh, come as a labor market outcomes so then production relations actually has been changed because of the whole mode of production, then reserve army of labor, and then accumulation process. And then, of course, the outsourcing is one of the point, that point of discussion right now. The, and very complicated, contracting and subcontracting. We don't know how many employer that em, worker they have in India, for example, and take, con, I mean, consider oil, in, oil, oil industry, for example, or cement industry from Northeast, and then try to understand all the workers who's, I mean, they are working for whom. So this outsourcing, contracting, and subcontracting is one of the point that uh, right now is very puzzling, and not only in India. I mean, in, uh, also uh, you know across the world, they are actually puzzled, and especially ILO, they are also coming up with different set of you know conventions and the recommendations for that. And then uh, all of us we are aware that. Uh, market is getting re you know restructuring international labor market and domestic market also we have to respond to the international labor market and then of course the deregulation and the flexibility and then linkages through the production this is also one of the point of discussion right now as far as labor market is concerned because bargain when as far as bargaining is concerned then labor is a very variable factor like you can bargain with labor but you can't bargain with the capital all right, because capital are fixed or the constant. And therefore, deregulation, flexibility, and linkages that we are talking about, it is with respect to labor. And the, 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 uh, the third component that I'm borrowing from ILO, they are little you know, concerned about the standardization and the non-standardization of the employment as an outcome of outsourcing, deregulation, and flexibility. So the, these are the macro debate are going on as far as labor market is concerned in not only in India across uh, you know the globe. I strongly feel that any to build any argument, we have to we need to 
understand what are the theoretical foundation or the underpinning that we have. So honestly speaking, informal sector, if you, if you have come across informal sector, informal economy, uh, it's very, very difficult to theorize till date. And we also don't have any unique definition or the unique theorization that can actually lead us to say that yes, informal sector is like this. As far as India, we still interchangeably we use our unorganized sector and informal sector and organized sector and formal sector. I have some uncomfortability in this duality. In, 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 in uh, outside India, they have very clear, like they have formal sector and informal sector, that makes sense. But as far as India is concerned, so it even, I mean, you know, we have to complicate the things and therefore this duality came, but we got the logic. Although it is not mentioned anywhere, what is the, what is the, you know, logic behind drawing this, but my understanding, and especially I'm referring here, uh, Abhijit Sen and Himangshu, they tried to, uh, try to understand uh, or try to theorize. And if I see all the definition right from National Commission on Labor, first National Commission Labor on second, and then uh, National Commission on Enterprises for Unorganized Sector. So all these definition, if you see closely, then basically they are hinting two things. So organized and unorganized is very clearly sector specific. If my understanding, you know, goes along with this and then formal and informal is basically the nature of employment of the job. So that means contract is involved there. So somehow I feel that within organized sector you can also have formalized work and informal work but within unorganized how employment can be formal. So that's one of the questions that I'm always puzzled with. But if we see the debate, so I always feel that when we discuss about the informal economy. I always feel that it's not like very recent phenomenon, although everybody is trying to say that it, it has come from 1970s as an you know, outcome of the structural adjustment program. Could be, but uh, one of the reasons, yes, uh, one of the reasons that they all, I mean, always it, it is being quoted, especially by the eco economist. And if you see the labor market theories, till 1960s, very predominantly by, given by economists. And then somehow in early 1970s, they failed to theorize further. And then actually social anthropologists came and then tried to bridge that gap. So that is one of the ways in which informal sector actually reshaped. And the whole term came in, in academia. So, uh, three, primarily three um, major approaches that uh, in so far that we have come across. One is dualistic view, like very dual economy, uh, starting with, you know, Keith Hart and then Victor Tokman and then also international labor organization, they also tried to theorize. So their way in which, uh, you know, uh, their way to define informal sector was very from, uh, you know, duality characteristics and the second uh, then one one group of people they said no you hang on you have to think beyond uh, duality and then it's a basically the structure that how formal sector is being structured and which one is the outcome so now let's think about the outcome and then we could actually think more holistically while defining informal sector so if we see that dual economy so start with very old theory that, you know, 19, um, by Arthur Lewis. I mean, I'm not sure how many of you have come across. He got Nobel also for this model. So his model is unlimited supply of labor, model based on unlimited supply of labor, considering developing nations. And he emphasized on the surplus economy, where he, he had taken uh, tradition and modern sector. Traditional sector, he into, I mean, he cons, I mean, he uh, consider rural area, and modern sector is basically industrial sector that he consider, and he had given very simple calculation that uh, labor abundant country or surplus economy, you we have unlimited of unlimited supply of labor, and we have disguised unemployment in the surplus uh, economy, especially in the agriculture. 
so those egg, i mean those worker can easily or those labor can easily be absorbed by the modern sector very simple whose marginal productivity is zero can't contribute anything they are just there in the field in agricultural sector so those labor can be can be can be absorbed by the modern sector so that that was very simple way and then later in 1970s uh, harris and toraro came and then said no this is this is not as simple as uh, the way you have explained and they have brought the concept called this migration the whole concept of migration and very traditional way that people why modern sector which is very highly skilled sector why they will uh, they will attract or why they will absorb this labor uh, whose marginal productivity is zero and surplus labor are basically illiterate and unskilled why skilled sector will require or demand for that sort of labor force so that that was the first point that they 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 uh, you know criticize uh, lewis model and they said that uh, this is not actually about this uh, well, you know marginal productivity it is basically the wage differentiation if anybody uh, you know um, aspire to go move outside the agricultural sector that wage rate in the modern sector has to be higher so that is a very simple way to but i also i mean feel that now i think is it also somewhere it is irrelevant because even wage is low but still people are moving from rural area to urban so age this uh, this wage uh, differences or this i mean you know dispersion doesn't actually hold any sort of uh, important role in 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 or driving factor for the migration so it's a more like aspiration your decision making process and then ha and then Harris Toraro, they left by saying that not everybody who ever will come from rural economy will get, will, will be absorbed in the urban. So some people will keep on trying their luck in the urban areas, but then many people they will not. So they said they left by saying that either people will be uh, unemployed or underemployment will take place. So they, they just had introduced two more concepts. One is underemployment, another one is unemployed. Either people will be not working, or they will be working where they they didn't want to work. They didn't come for in the in the urban area. So there they actually they left their discussion. And then in 1972, so this 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 phenomena was happening not only in, in I mean in in develop, developing country, also I mean across the global south, like uh, Africa, then then Latin America and and South Asia. South Asia. So that was the uh, situation was happening. And then the question, one question came that whether this phenomena is a temporary or permanent. Then ILO, ILO was puzzled. And whenever, uh, yeah, I mean, we all have to remember that whenever crisis happens, then ILO always tried to come in between and then try to solve. You know, and then they set up one commission called World Employment Program, what we call WEP under which they have several uh, country missions and several city missions just to understand whether this phenomena which is growing quite fast is a permanent or temporary so this is how the whole discussion and then ILO jumped into it and Keith Hart was hired by ILO and then Keith Hart uh, was was actually the overall in charge for uh, Kenya mission and then he was he was social anthropologist from uh, from England and then he was there and then he was he was also carrying forward his own study and then he said he he was puzzled because he counterattacked all this you know mainstream economist and then by saying that what about these people those who are not residing in the urban areas like somebody is working on peri urban issues so what about this uh, these women or these men who are coming every day from nearby areas setting up their stalls shining you know shoes and then uh, you know late in the evening they are going back they are working in the urban areas but can you call it modern sector so the, his first criticism actually was on that modern sector all right so that dichotomy that was brought by Harris Todaro and Louis, Louis and other uh, Firenis and many other uh, you know economies so his first argument is they are earning they are happy they are earning they are unskilled they are illiterate but they are still earning they are going back they didn't come come in the urban areas with any sort of expectation so that was the first thing uh, he he said and then he said that 
uh, this work, I mean this sector is very much informal ways in which they are operating their business. So, this is how the whole concept called you know the uh, informal sector came, uh, but is very much dual in nature, right. So, you have formal, you have informal, you have two sector and then one uh, I mean people are coming from one to another and deriving their livelihood from different places. And then the other group which quite convincing is structure, I mean uh, Carolyn Mosier uh, and, and, and uh, Manuel Castle and Alessandro Portes, they came, they are Latin American uh, sociologists uh, and economic sociologists, they tried, came and then they said that we are actually not, we should not, we should think beyond this duality, it's about the structure that we are because of this mode of production is being changed and therefore um, you need some subsector to depend upon, I mean to depend upon who can actually produce uh, and you, so that you can reduce your per unit labor cost. So they, their target actually was from per unit labor cost just to reduce the overall cost of production you outsource and this outsource because you are following that mode of production. So they actually this 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 Caroline Moser and Manuel Castle and Alexander Portes they actually discuss about the structure list. And then Hernando de Soto uh, his very famous book on um, the, the other path uh, published in 1989 and who actually uh, brought the question of the dichotomy over legal and legitimacy like he his ex, you know his ways of definition of informal sector was little different way and he actually talked about you know good laws and bad laws so he said that you can make good laws but with lot of procedure then obviously people will tend to avoid that and then choose the bad laws for example so the, that's how he he had uh, given and he introduced 3d so, 1D is uh, D, uh, deregulation, you have to you know flexi flexibilize the rules and regulation so that you know poor because poor can't uh, go through that processes and then second D is uh, you know D, uh, de-bureaucratization like you should not uh, you know they, I mean workers should not be uh, forged by lot of rules and regulation. And then another one, the D is decentralization. So don't don't make it very centralized process. You have to, I mean, you also have to depend, you have to give the responsibility to the, for example, to urban local bodies. So they should be, I mean, you have to create this uh, 3D uh, to work informal sector, you know, self-sufficient. And he was not saying that informal sector is bad. He was saying that this is alternative and uh, it could actually support uh, your GDP. And then he had taken three examples that informal housing, informal trade and transportation. Informal housing is basically the land related issues that he tried to portray and then informal trade under which he considers street vendors and then transportation is basically you know all formal and informal tr transportations. So the micro aspect that I feel this is uh, later in, in uh, 1989 there is one book called uh, The World Underneath uh, where they try to define different institutions and relations primarily. So one way in which they try to define informal sector is through you know different institutions, how do institutions they work and how relations are being built and therefore which one is formal and which one is informal and which one is criminal for example. So he, they have come up with a concept called licit, like uh, in a formal way, legal, and another one is illicit. So two things that they have tried to define. One is process of production and, uh, and distribution, the way in which you produce the goods, and then the final goods, like cons consider manufacturing units and manufacturing products, and then economic type, where we'll define this formal, informal, this duality. So if your process and, 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 and uh, process of production and distribution is very licit and your product is licit, for example, manufacturing unit, any ma manufacturing goods and unit, if they follow, you know, if, if it comes from like, uh, comes from uh, manufacturing industry, so then obviously it is formal. This is how they define. 
and then if process and product of production and distribution is illicit but final product is licit <coughs> like for example uh, agricultural commodities but the way in which uh, steed vendors activity was being operated in india till 19 uh, till 2014 before 2014 the way in which the occupation was carried out was actually not uh, legalized it was illegitimate way because they occupied public space uh, occupied public space uh, illegitimate way but the product that they were selling and especially goods and services that are formal so this process actually that uh, that came and as a de you know definition it came as informal so this 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 is another one way in which we can actually look into it different ways different schools of thought actually have come to define this informal sector informality some some actually they looked at from space perspective somebody looked at from relation institutions perspective and some are from labor there is a two way relationship between formal and informal because formal uh, by outsourcing they are depending on 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 informal for their inputs and as output informal they are actually supporting to formal so this linkage is very clear between organized and unorganized sector and then even between formal and formal and criminal they also have they also have the uh, two ways relationship and therefore like uh, i give this example i don't know how it is relevant like for example if you take bribe a uh, police i mean traffic police give takes bribe okay so that is one way or they are taking bribe uh, from street vendors even after legalizing this i mean after the act and then informal and, in, uh, and, and, and criminal, there, there is a two-way relationship. Also, there is also one relationship. Like if you, if you, like, uh, if you um, produce uh, local, uh, local drinks at your home, I mean, if it is home-based, and if you don't have legal you know, uh, license, then how that, we, and you're selling that in the market. So then obviously this is prohibited in, you know, by laws and regulations so this is how they try to link these three different types of broad three different types of eco economy in terms of the relationship so broad category is wage workers and self employed wage worker you know that you have to you have to uh, work under somebody so that means contract relationship like employer and employees relationship has to be there and the self employed like own account i mean yourself i mean you're employed by yourself so within wage worker, which is little alarming if you see the data, like wage workers, informal wage workers within formal sector is increasing in India. This is quite you know, alarming. Industries, they are preferring outsourced workforce than their permanent workers. So as far as uh, informal sector is concerned, I also feel that uh, there is some problem in you know, calculation that how many you know uh, how many um, informal sector how many how many informal sector workers how many organized unorganized you know workers they are involved and so and so forth so we have commissions it's not that we don't have we have commission even uh, before ILO started thinking on informal sector we had the commission who actually identified uh, workers but from organizations point of view and then we also have very uh, you know uh, very elaborated uh, report from Nas second national commission on labor uh, set up in 1999 and the report came in 2002 first national commission on labor set up in 1966 uh, and the report came uh, 1969 which says very simple way to define uh, those who have not been able to organize themselves like very much whether i can organize i mean from organizations point of view organizing point of view and the second one, second National Commission on Labor uh, is very exhaustive and then they also have separate chapters for each category and they also have identified uh, national classification of the occupation and occupational category is always you know, hierarchy based. So it's very, very much on the basis of economic <coughs> activities. So they came up with very, very you know, uh, comprehensive report and then they tried to uh, give uh, that those workers are not protected um, and, and they, are working, uh, they are working at extremely low wage and uneconomic returns uh, with uneconomic returns and intermittent you know, sort of job 
which doesn't have uh, where to go and then like for example footloose concept by Jan Bremen like you don't know like construction workers unorganized construction workers they don't know where they will be heading after for example in Guwahati so some you know broad macro underlying you know assumptions based on uh, some basic facts are more than 90 percent of the workers and currently we have 400 and uh, 87 million workforce. So there is a difference between workforce and labor force. Workforce is those who are actively working and labor force those who are working plus those who we, those who are willing to join. So workforce, uh, if you see that almost 90, I mean 90 to 91 percent, they are working as informal. I mean they are engaged in informal way, which comes around 457 million. So this data is coming, I mean this data, uh, this calculation was made uh, based on uh, 68th round of National Sample Survey Office uh, published in 2011-12. Uh, Thereafter, 2015-16, uh, we are actually waiting for that round, but government, they are now saying that uh, they will give us some more authentic data source from where we can analyze. So we are just hoping and therefore we are also getting backdated because the same data we have been analyzing since 2012-13. So we are also eagerly waiting like what, how much employment has been created within organized, how much employment has been created within organized, unorganized. So let, let, let us have a look but we don't have any source of uh, data and I am quite skeptical that we will get it in near future. So we have to believe on 487 as the last uh, workforce. So, and um, those who are working like 8, 90, 90 to 91 percent of the workforce, is, uh, they are, you know, lower earnings and higher risk, uh, higher risk and their earning level is very low and mostly women and also show you the pyramid where, you know, mostly uh, lower uh, earnings uh, section is occupied by women and children in terms of job also in terms of also in terms of uh, wages and also in terms of you know vulnerability they are at the bottom of the pyramid so now some of the you know employment challenges that we have in india one is of course the quantity uh, quantity of employment how much we get and one of the alarming issues that right now we have is very high urban youth educated youth, those who are not actively involved in the organ, I mean in the, in the workforce, they are in the labor force and we have found that 20% uh, of them are young urban men and 30% of them are actually young urban women. And then another one concern that uh, when, I mean we did discuss in 1970s, again we are discussing is the underemployment like you know there is not much job actually being created it is not proportion to the population growth rate and therefore it is again another one of the you know issues in which we should really actually think upon and then if we see the quality of employment so now if you see the global employment index or global employment report they are not now they are not talking about uh, whether employment is being created or whether it, employment is not created, they are, cre they are saying that whether it is a good job or it is a bad job because country like India, people can't survive without any job. So now, it is uh, interesting what uh, Jayati Ghosh and, uh, and also also Binopal from Tis Mumbai and Jayati Ghosh from GNU, their reports suggesting that 40% of rural self-employed, they earn less than 1,500 rupees per month and 33% of urban self-employed, they earn less than 2,000 you know, rupees per month. So this is data is from 2005-6 uh, you know, data. So this is also, I mean, very, very, very upsetting. Like when we are, I mean, we are claiming that uh, informal sector workers are, you know, uh, earning less and then who are them, you know, even self-employed workers. Like self-employed, even in the in the pyramid, we, 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 we feel the self-employed self workers, they are much higher in the pyramid structure of the employment. So now, 
if we see that you know occupational category in the urban informal sector based on their visibility so uh, we categorize most visible then less visible and least visible for most visible i mean street vendors most visible rickshaw puller most visible auto driver most visible and then less visible like uh, you know worker those who are working in the small factories and then least visible which is little uh, you know when we refer as the invisible labor labor uh, anywhere so i feel the home based workers uh, workers in the food processing units we don't know you know how many of them are there in the urban slum in guwahati how many tailors you know there in i mean tailoring they can also i mean they 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 can fall under less visible also but how many workers are involved in pickle making for example or jam making we all of us we know in context of guwahati so now if we see the quick uh, look on the different dimensions is contribution to employment of course uh, and the gdp because it it has been calculated and that 2007 report says clearly that uh, 60 60% are coming from informal economy but it is very heterogeneous in nature they are not homogeneous group they don't form any even within street vendors activity within domestic workers there are different types of categories um, and then skills and human capital is very low and earning level also is very low in most of uh, the cases and capital uh, they have uh, very low capital to start with they also don't have any sort of skill uh, they can enter and legality that we already discussed and of course the poverty and then female workers they are the mostly they are the involved these are the you know um, findings from from 2000 you know uh, street vendors data uh, across uh, across all all 17 cities so basically they are as i said that even till date although um, street vendors act clearly outlines that you know state bank of india or any nationalized bank can come and then can provide but the point is who will take i mean who will take as a like guarantor for example so but still they are depending on the informal um, credit sources and then of course again multi multiplicity of the occupation one vendor employed and then again also helping to the other workers and getting wage so these are the tif- different and bribe payments is ease of survival i said and i argue that bribe payment is very much formal i mean informal institution that they create like bribe is very 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 clearly you know is a very well coordinated uh, way that they organize and i tried to calculate and one of my chapters in my book uh, that come came out as uh, i mean came out from my phd thesis and that i tried to calculate based i mean based on very you know interviews with various stakeholders and it is around like 47 different actors are involved in you know in the recipient and as far as bribe you know um, concern that means if one for example women they are the most vulnerable and then if women they pay 100 uh, 10 rupees per day that means the 10 rupees are actually getting you know divided into all 47 because you are not giving to police you have to give to local you know uh, middleman uh, what they call in in delhi and mumbai is a zero number so it's very interesting so zero number collects and zero number actually the vendors from them only one person um, who is actually the leader sort of like local goon not goon like <coughs> muscle man and then they will they will collect all the bribes and then they will put it in the envelope what will be called as puri and then that puri will be given to uh, officials in municipality mainly and then also to police so even we are also involved along with my supervisor back in 2000 2013 before this act came so bombay municipal corporation mcgm they uh, they approached us to identify the public space where uh, vendors from t- i mean from 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 mumbai um can be you know given so there are two members committee and i was there to overall to look after so in front of us only so when we are there with bms mcgm because that project was funded by them so they thought that we are also friend of them okay 
So they, 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 they thought, okay, in front of us, they were actually exchanging that uh, informal means ways, like this puri, and then um, all the sort of, like uh, they only had shown that, that uh, the truck driver, the truck driver who is the most knowledgeable person who knew exactly where all the street vendors they sit because they are the one who actually evict the drive that they exercise. They are the this this uh, you know truck drivers. So they they said okay, don't worry. So and when that I mean after looking at the truck, after seeing the truck, all vendors they were just running, you know, running with their goods. And then um, and then this uh, especially this um, you know supervisor and then invigilation invigilator officer or somebody then it's okay fine aaj tumhara nahi hoga so is a sort of indication so that sort of you know kind of power relation that we have seen and the you know attitude of the civic authorities authorities that i'm trying to say that how they actually create and make and generate this sort of you know um, informal sort of institution but i feel that institution is even much stronger than the formal institutions so now um, i mean initial old theories traditional theories they say that people they tend to move from rural to urban but here also says that people they also come from urban within the state like urban to urban okay urban to urban and for example in bhubneshwar this is like almost 92, 91%, 1.38%. They come from other cities like Katak and other places to do street vending in Bhubaneswar. And also in Mumbai, like people coming from, you know, Satara and other places, some, you know, Kolhapur, they come and then they do business in, 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 in Bombay. So these are also few things that are actually coming, like even for, for Indore. These are the explanation that you know, some factors that we consider uh, like age, education, family, then caste, then religion, previous occupation, then non-institutional factors like bright payment and we, we, we found this explanation from the statistical analysis that uh, the few things that is interesting, the last one like migrants prefer to pay more bribe to sustain leading to you know, less eviction, that is their notion that they have. So there's a qualitative factor variable that we consider and migrants they tend to pay more as compared to uh, non-migrants. As far as street vendors is concerned, positive aspect is like they uh, create their economic bargaining power and they also create social bargaining power. Like they, they try, they tend to develop very cordial relationship with all the uh, police uh, men and then I mean, a man obviously not women, and then then um, and all municipal uh, officials. So they create through buy, bribe payments and daily sales, daily sales with the cust customer directly because they they have to uh, you know attract. They also have fixed uh, amount of you know their own own customer, and and then uh, daily bribes basically with all the officials, and then economic bargaining like investment. Uh, you know, amount of borrow and the interest is basically with all money lenders and your friends, relatives. So they, they actually also create this economic bargaining, which actually was leading to their entrepreneurship skill and residual. I mean, I, I'll not discuss that because we haven't discussed about that, you know, uh, regression equation. So this is how they create. So the, this half, this half is also very interesting. So this is seen that age, your age and then gender is actually is not going in favor of the street vending activity because they are, uh, and we have created one level of variable, qualitative variable, these are the qualitative explanation which came out from their narratives. So this, these are considered as uh, disadvantage, social disadvantage, um, you know, so uh, dis disadvantage factor for this occupation. But year of schooling and family members are considered to be advantage because is they are actually helping to uh, the overall outcome. So this this gender is quite interesting because they have very little uh, very little investment, and they are also not. I mean, uh, and uh, women they are basically the secondary. Um, they're uh, they're actually uh, supporting as a secondary occupation to the household income. They are not the primary source of income. 
they are not providing that. So this is how, I mean, it has come. And then post act possibility. So, uh, so this is interesting. So since um, <coughs> state vendors act uh, is considered to be one of the very progressive uh, like, like state response to the informal sector and is very, very positive example. And then also for the national uh, policy on environment. So that is also considered to be one of the very po progressive, you know, uh, uh, processes from the coming from the state. But all on speculation because we haven't revisited the field and it's too early. So uh, it came, this act in 2014, in March, and then um, I was curious, and then uh, IGTPLS, I think I'm sure you might have you know, heard about it, Indo-Global uh, Society for Social Services. So they, they, they requested, uh, I mean, then we, we designed one program, and then I visited Calcutta, Bombay, and, uh, and Guwahati just to see that how uh, this State Vendors Act is coming out from the government officials. So one example is very fascinating from my own state, it's like Calcutta. So I was there in Calcutta, uh, you know, municipal corporation, KMC. And then I said, uh, so have you heard about, have you heard about uh, State Vendors Act? So he said, what? Yeah, which one? But as a commissioner can't ask so many questions, right? It, it will be embarrassing for him. So, and then immediately um, he downloaded. <laughs> yeah, ye bhi aa gaya. Abhi to food, food security bill leke hum log pareshan hai. And then what sort of question he will ask next? Because there is no point, right, of discuss. So, well, why don't you go to our uh, solid waste management department? I said, what? Solid waste management and street vendors? How? <laughs> So that I, I visited to solid waste management department in, in Calcutta and then that engineer was very, he was very sweet actually. I mean, he is the one who said, why don't, why can't we work together? Why don't you design something for us? I said, okay. okay. <laughs> I said, excuse me. So uh, I said, okay, we'll come back, we'll come back. So he's still in my WhatsApp. So, <laughs> but he's, he's very sweet. I, 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 I'm very fond of that person because he was so honest. He, he said, boss, patai nahi hai, ye kya ho hai? maybe you come after one year so that, you know, we get, because we are now under pressure, this, that, that, 2014, ye election, bagada, bagada. So uh, maybe that could be the reason. So this is one. The second one is, I was so happy out of Bombay, Bombay and this also could address one of his questions that he addressed, uh, Manish. So um, I visited Bombay and then uh, all TVC town vending committees, uh, just I wash meeting, half an hour ke liye meeting hota hai, and then women they are not supposed to raise their voice because they are counterpart. They will say, "Hey, tumko kya pata hai? Dekh rahe na hum log, theek hai? Ho jayega." This is the same problem that we are facing. Okay, but. Honestly speaking, I was very impressed with Guwahati Municipal Corporation because Guwahati Municipal Corporation, they, are, they had shown very, you know, very progressive. They said, yes, we are thinking. They are the first one to realize and then they are so progressive and then they said that why can't we form a committee? Sab kuch ho gaya, uske baad this, that event that I explained. Baad mein mujhe pata chala, achha, all of them are IS, right? They know what is happening across all the cities. Ye udhar ja raha, wo udhar ja raha, sab transfer, right? So who actually had shown very, you know, uh, positive attitude towards, you know, forming vending committee, he got transferred to other city. Other came from other cities. So, nahi hua. So just, just, just imagine if this is happening in bigger cities, what will happen in the smaller cities like my hometown, Agartala and all. But let me tell you, they are much more progressive than these bigger cities. Because my hometown, like for example, Siliguri, they are much more uh, progressive and very, very, you know, uh, active in terms of designing laws at the local level uh, and then designing laws for the state vendors in favor of state vendors. So I think I mean, we haven't considered any of the uh, tier, you know, three cities, but that scenario could be different. So in across. Anyway, so as uh, if we go state vendors, you know, if we go by, you know, uh, clause by clause, act by, uh, you know, clause by clause. 
so the first one is entry now earlier entry was uh, not that easy but if you have social contact with your vendors uh, like you, with your friends you can easily be you know entered in the fee I mean in the occupation but now my hunch is it will be restricted because now entire licensing is on the mood of the govern government official and especially the lower level officials so you have to build now repo with them so now right, one level of rent seeking I'm sure about it the second one uh, of course, this uh, licensing system, they are not favor because you know how, how much rent seeking, you know, activity it happens like uh, in 90, back in 1998, this Mumbai's report suggests like 368 crore rupees is comes from street vendors every year. So now just ima imagine it's, it was like calculated by one of our professors back in 19, 1998. So how it happens? and how will happen now and then they need also identity card of the local right identity they need id proof so what about those vendors and those you know tribal women they are coming all the way from you know meghalaya border to sell their vegetable on on, on ujan bazar market for example or beltala market because they will not have any local 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 uh, proof right <laughs> So this is absolutely what about the peri urban for example those you know that we, we always say that you know labor mobility or the linkages between urban and rural you know so now rural and uh, places are becoming urban you know hinterland so what about those people are coming actually so because they will not have uh, any sort of you know licensing and all and then private investor yes because um, that that i got it from pune and bombay so now reliance they are very interested vendors so they said that hum chai bana ke denge aap sell karo hum chai bana ke denge aap sell karo profit hum log share kar lenge so now street vendors they are not interested but all the union members organization members they are very happy are chalo tumko kuch to milega we have definite ye and aap se chai to reliance se zyada acha milega so wo log they will know how to cook tea you know so it's like sort of, I don't know what we can call, it's a sort of different forms of market that they are playing with and the attitude again, the organization, those who work very actively for state vendors, uh, bill, so now they are very inactive but according to me, they, they will be now, they should be more active right now, right, how to enact, how to, you know, respond to the act. So this is what, uh, you know, different uh, things is happening but we haven't carried out any sort of, you know, uh, scientific uh, study and then profit sharing uh, that we say that uh, organization they are very active and borraya chalo ek saath mein karenge business so now there won't be any eviction so but we'll take care of so that um, so what we say that uh, what Hanindu Di Soto said in his argument that if you make this sort of uh, you know if you make very progressive uh, and very active, very active, uh, you know, laws are very good laws, then tendency will be workers, they will operate outside the law, outside the legal process, what he termed called extra legal activities in context of, you know, development. And people will tend to choose the other path for the development. I always feel like, I am st stuck here, like I get always like again I go back to Martha Chen, it's a given by Martha Chen and then you see that unpaid family workers and then shadow wage that uh, are involved, like if you working in your own, like for example, I mean you, you ask that question, like within self-employed, so you're hiring and then that whole definition of the self-employed, the self-employed ke saath your family labor are actually free, you got it, even for the street vending activity also. So this is larger. So with your self-employed one person, your family member will be supporting your activities. And then if you now imagine you are sending out your, uh, your, your family member or especially your children for study, higher study, you have to hire, right? The moment you hire, 
you have to pay them daily wage right so what sort of this like this is shadow wage which we don't we tend to you know forget we don't calculate and this is what exactly is you know when, when we calculate when we try to separate between capital and labor this shadow wage and this is uh, calculated in context of agriculture especially so now this shadow wage is actually coming even in the self employed and how you you know like how you make it like how to uh, differentiate and then at the time of profit calculation at the time of income calculation you tend to not to you know uh, disclose that so as you go up then poverty risk is very low according to this pyramid as you go down then your average earning is uh, sorry uh, as you go up then your average earning will be high so wo ulta ho hoga theek hai and then more like employer and informal wage worker regular they are predominantly men like for example small small workshop in ghaziabad or 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 in like owner of the food processing units in guwahati so owner of that units will be men but all the work all the workers those who will be there like industrial out workers home workers outsource workers um either uh, you know uh, you know children and women in the urban like for example in bombay and uh, and and delhi slums and also in guwahati slums they they are, they do a lot of outsourcing work right teaching wala so basically by by you know uh, women and in Go uh, in in bombay we have seen that button stitching is always preferred by the children they do really fast there are many like one ngo uh, is there who actually worked on that so so now dual again like we discuss about the three things so earlier dualism was very simple then structural changes and then legality so i'm going back again coming back to duality but little more complicated manner now let's revisit keeping all the examples that we had given like uh, i always feel that same sort of with same level of education and skills in one sector you will get higher wage and the other sector you will get lower wage so this is actually in economics is a slang that labor market discrimination you are not supposed to do that like for example if i i i'm working in tiss and with the same qualification same thing even maybe more than you know my skills or whatever education somebody is working in other private organization and i don't want to take actually the name of the universities so they pay at least half of the ugc scale so this is absolutely labor market discrimination at the macro level forget about the micro level okay so labor market discrimination should not take place like for example very classic work by early hostile on emotional labor on you know considering uh american airline that no matter what whatever but you are supposed to smile your smile should not be you know less because you are in the hospitality industry you have to attract customer because you are very much part of the accumulation process so how your emotion actually is being exercised and utilized and used by uh, by 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 this mode of production so obviously introduction of contract system in the public sector has actually institutionalized this dual economic model so contract system like the moment we start you know, responding to our the global labor flexibility model the moment we say that fdi ane do special economic zone banne do because according to that zone i'll give a lot of relaxation and one of the relaxation will be on the labor laws and now you know uh, labor code is being uh, prepared so out of 44 labor laws they are trying to club them and make into four labor code so one labor code is on working conditions one labor code on industrial relations one labor code on wage and one labor code on social security and welfare so earlier discussion was that you we ha we should have separate separate laws for separate activities so that each act can act as an institution and make more productive and more uh, effective in order to efficiency so now i don't know uh, 
अगेन कि क्लब करो बहुत ज़्यादा लेबल लॉज होने से कॉम्प्लिकेटेड हो रहा है सो मेक इट फोर एंड देन मेक मोर यू नो प्रोडक्टिव एंड मोर एफिशियंट द होल मॉडल लेबर मार्केट मॉडल विल बी एफिशियंट एंड आउटकम विल बी एफिशियंट सो डिफरेंशियल वेज पॉलिसीज इन पब्लिक सेक्टर एज वेल एज प्राइवेट सेक्टर एक्चुअली मेक्स दिस परमानेंट एंड वर्कर एंड एम्प्लॉयज दैट डुअलिज्म देन एड हॉक एंड कॉन्सोलिडेटेड सैलरीज वर्कर्स दैट डुअलिज्म क्लासिक एग्जाम्पल इज दिल्ली यूनिवर्सिटीज कॉलेजेस यू यू नो आई डोंट नीड टू टेल मच I I mean it's a team meaning and uh, but unfortunately that is the model many of our friends who are working because there is no job creation there is absolutely no job in the market in the university or the, in the education and therefore they agree upon and then every in clause by clause in every 3 uh, months or 4 months you have to renew your contract so you have to I mean this is I find absolutely indignified way to you know recruit your you know teachers teaching teachers community there is al although there is no discrimination in terms of wage but there is a discrimination in terms of you know sort of uh, process but i'm sure when ad hoc faculty enters in the class they will not negotiate with their skills right ke mujhe contract nahi mila na main aaj kam hi paraunga that never it, it never actually happens but anyway so this is what and then subcontracting in railway banks health sector educational institutions sub like irctc is a classic example like uh, who sells food tea in the railways i just don't understand in bank security i think one of the major concern and security professional you have to hire them right on payroll why they are outsourcing where is the security the main they are the main you know they should be uh, they should be the one of the main worker in the their organizational structure but in banks this is a debate that you know uh, banking sector they are trying to you know uh, discussing so the next i think is very last one i don't know how many of you have come across the term called gig economy is very in in the market now lot of people they are working and trying to conceptualize gig economy gig economy doesn't only include informal economy they will they are also including virtual market like amazon mantra and those invisible deli delivery boys and just think those who pack your product and one of my students she actually worked on this on her dissertation and got published in uh, one of the very reputed journal in sage so that actually reveals a very interesting facts in guwahati so they have absolutely no working hour and skill is the first skill is you are supposed to you are supposed to uh, know <coughs> how to write so that means i am absolutely unskilled i don't know how to write bike so iska matlab i am out from that market the second one very careful is that we call delivery boys we don't call delivery man there is a age difference we call postman remember that debate you have to i mean we have to think of like age is very much and gender is is not delivery women i mean delivery girls is a delivery boys and specific age if you are more than 30 you are not supposed to so this these are the different uh, you know institutions social institution or intersection intersectionalities i think are coming up and then state led policies are contributing more into informal is i think is a statement i should have make at least for safe side i should have made one question mark right but it looks like a statement and yes this uh, i i think i had already discussed like promoting self Uh, employment and entrepreneurship there is a tendency to add more into the informal sector and consider smart city project and guwahati is one of the smart cities ask us what sort of you know trouble that we have in name of water they are digging the road and redigging the road because every digging a lot of money right you have to feel that paisa hai again you have to uh, you know you have to make the concrete road again fir se kodo fir se concrete ke liye paisa so this is happening across and then a lot of uh, eviction is going on so first of all 
gov i mean uh, gmc they are not they are they haven't completed their head counts on the street vendors and the, in the smart city project came later and suggesting that these are the places will be will be coming under smart city project and therefore street vendor not even single street vendor they are supposed to sit here because commuting thoda problem ho raha or uh, and you know what are the uh, what are the uh, what are the indicators or the parameters are there in the smart cities basically beautification digital so that you know some big giant corporation can get all the you know contract kya uh, vi kya video video rahega uh, in all the bus stops and also wifi free hoga so we don't need any rocket science to calculate how it is happening and then beautification and they are saying that job will be created this is what their argument is but i feel little little disappointment like one has to be there first and then one more and what had happened in fifa fifa world cup in south africa so massive what had happened in delhi in, during commonwealth massive eviction drive like like i don't know what 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 where we are heading and we are repeating actually like this and the same thing and again this is a statement and um, shugato marjit from calcutta university uh, in one of his very uh, interesting uh, paper he 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 mentioned that uh, what state actually is doing is supporting street vendors or just using st uh, street vendors and informal sector as a buffer for the alternative livelihood options mm -hmm.